Like you'll see people doing marathons and you'll ask yourself, what's the purpose of running a marathon? And those people like learning, you know, digging to the edge of who they are as a human being. So like right now in prep, I'm consistently asking myself if I'm doing enough. And that's my own internal battle. And I would fail, bro. And I was like, damn, like, like this, my, my life isn't going anywhere. Cause I would see everyone else. Like, I think the last time someone passed away was Kobe. And I cried with all that content that's on YouTube, people watch it, people take it, but it's like, do you apply it? Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know what I'll be tomorrow, but if I would have died today, I'd be happy. And we are super happy to have had the pleasure of interviewing Mike. I'll be honest with you as always, guys. I met Mike like three years ago in London and have followed his fitness content ever since. However, however, I was super impressed by his mindset and the things that he shared during this interview. Mike fell in love with weightlifting during, during his six months period he had between pre-med and medical school. He has now recently finished medical school and yes, he's an official doctor. Uh, with almost 700,000 subscribers on YouTube and over 450 videos published there so far, uh, he's probably tackled any fitness question you might have at least twice. During our conversation, he shares the ugly truths about losing weight. We also ask him about artificial sweeteners. We talk about his prep and generally how easy it is to develop an unhealthy relationship with food. And last but not least, Mike answers to some of our esoteric questions and opens up sharing one of his greatest fears as well. Without a doubt, this is one of the best podcasts we're, we are putting out there. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Mike Diamonds. You are listening to The Grateful Show with your hosts, Pascu and Bogdan. Join us on our mission to spread awareness around mental health and make people feel happier and overall more grateful. Each week, we bring you an inspiring guest, stories, and a message that will help you become your best self and pursue your life mission. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to The Grateful Show. Hope you are all doing fantastic, and if you're not, you are about to be, because today we have no other than Mike Diamond. How is it going, brother? Good, man, good. Early morning, South Africa, but I can't be happier, man. How are you I guys am- doing? Yeah, very well. I mean, it's here. It's early as well, even for Pasco, I guess. And uh, yeah, good to wake up very early just to get uh, a little bit of advantage in uh, in our life. Sure. But just to break the for ice, sure. what are you grateful for, Mike, today? Man, uh, as corny as it sounds, I'm grateful for life. Um, mm-hmm. It's always just been like that. Uh, a lot of people ask why I live life a certain way. And I've grown up in the hospital. My mom's a nurse. So, you know, I've seen uh, um, all my life. I've just seen patients who wish they did things different in their life when they were in that scenario. I'm sure you've had a flu before or sick at any point and where you wish you were just healthy. So I'm just grateful for life, man. I can't complain. Um, My whole family's healthy. I'm healthy from there. Like I'm all smiles. You know, I do. I do the best I can. And that's why we're up early this morning. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, definitely it puts a lot of more perspective upon everything that we do uh, once once we start appreciating it for what it is. But Mike, for our audience that don't really know uh, who you are, I don't think there's anybody that doesn't know. But if there's any uh, in the audience listening that don't really know uh, much about you, can you give us like a brief introduction of who you are, how you came to be where you are now? Yeah, so... Um... Social media, everyone knows me as uh, Dr. Mike Diamonds or Mike Diamonds. Um, I recently finished medical school. I am a doctor. Um, I've been doing YouTube for seven years. How my story started was um, when I finished pre-med, I decided that I didn't want to just be a student again. Mm-hmm. So And just like, you know, go to school, eat a lot of food, go to bed, study. And I decided to pick up a camera. I was inspired by um individuals christian guzman i'm sure you've heard mm-hmm. another one um another one who's not around who doesn't make youtube videos anymore sean thompson and i saw them living their life you know living it to the fullest i caught a lot of inspiration from that and uh, throughout medical school i picked up a youtube camera in my first year and i basically documented my journey in terms of uh, fitness and health and balancing, um, medical school and fitness. And seven years later, here we are. 
Um, I'm more known on YouTube. We're approaching 700,000 subscribers, which is awesome. Instagram, roughly like 70K, if I'm not mistaken. And um, I will say that, that that journey has, you know, propelled me and helped me become the individual I am today. And that's probably where you know me from, mm-hmm, if you mm-hmm. do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. For sure, for sure. Thanks for sharing. And it's also how we met as well. I think we met a YouTube for meetup sure. in, in London. Sure. Um, but it's it's super interesting to to hear that basically you you got introduced early into medicine. You've been exposed to like seeing people probably like giving their last breaths. Uh, but I guess how how did you actually manage to get introduced to fitness because i understood the the place with youtube but how come you basically got so interested into fitness because there's a lot of uh, people that are studying medicine that are not that passionate about fitness as you are yeah um i feel when i did pre-med i would go to the gym once or twice and at that stage, right, I was um, doing my Bachelor of Science in Biochemistry and Microbiology. So I was a full-time nerd, I would say. And you would always get girls just being like, damn, look at his biceps. And look at this and look at that. And like, gosh, he looks so good. And I studied here in South Africa. So I was just like, you know what? Let me go and take care of my body a little bit. I could never have it established, but I enjoyed lifting, you know, apart from, you know, being motivated to go to the gym like by girls. And I finished my pre-med and I was like overweight. I had a belly and I did, I hated how I looked. I was like very grateful for like, you know, getting a degree and, you know, getting into med school. But I was like, man, I feel like trash. It, mm-hmm. it's, it's, like it's, it's not optimal. So I, I had six months in between, six months in between going from pre-med to medical school and I started going to the gym, but I had no idea of how to like get into shape. So mm-hmm. I did like hours of cardio and hours of training. And I would just eat what I considered was healthy. And at that time I was sharing like the journey on Instagram. I had nothing to do for like six months. And that was like, but at that time, this was probably super taboo to have to be shirtless on Instagram. And I was sharing this transformation and that's probably how I grew my first 10 K followers. Cause a lot of people would say, Hey, how, do, how are you doing this? It's like, man, this is the training I was doing. This is the diet. And I was sharing that information. By the time I got into med school, people were like, Hey, why don't you like make a YouTube channel? And then I was introduced mm-hmm. to Christian and Sean Thompson. Mm-hmm. And basically like my, this was like my first couple of months in Russia. So this is where I did medical school and I was just drinking like crazy with Russian vodka, <laughs> like on the weekends, bro, it was bad. And then like three months into medical school, I was like, okay, this needs to stop. Cause it's just not going to end well. And then I took on YouTube as my project. Instead of like going to party on weekends, I was going to make videos and the rest is history. Like I, I, I fell in love with it because I saw myself um, become a different person each and every single day. I was, and I was like, you you guys, I'm sure you guys also understand that, um, that addictive trait of training. Once yeah. you start training and you start seeing that progress, you, you consistently want to feel that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. you want to feel the endorphins, like those uh, yes. chemicals that go through your through your blood. Thanks for sharing uh, that one as well with us. But I'm just curious for because you were mentioning that you are fat and you you are on a journey to become fitter and stronger mentally, physically. Um, and I know that on your YouTube also you you post a lot of videos on uh, how to lose weight uh, as fast as possible. So yeah, if you can simplify. Uh, I'm going to ask you, what's the easiest way and fastest way somebody can get fit and strong nowadays? Yeah. So my YouTube channel, one thing that I do is that with YouTube, right, besides the content and info you share, YouTube and Instagram is all about metrics and data Mm -hmm. and it's clickbait. The internet is clickbait. If you don't, if you, if you create a boring title, like let's say you work for a news publication, if you click a boring title, you could have the best publication or the mm-hmm. best article in the world. No one is going to read it if you don't, mm-hmm. you know, grasp in it, grasp it in. The same goes with like any form of media. There is a level of clickbait. If you don't have that to a certain degree, then you, you're going to get a certain type of result. So I think it took me about three years 
to have my channel pop off. And I was making vlogs and I was, you know, sharing info, but the videos wouldn't get any traction. And I, I stumbled upon a video, how to lose belly fat in one week. It, it popped up in my recommendation and I watched the video it was like, drink lemon water. Um, <laughs> and I was like, what? And the video is still up there. The video was like 10 minutes of just garbage. And I was like, no, I can make a better video. I'm going to use mm -hmm. the exact same title, right? The video had about 16 million views. And I'm like, no way 16 million people think that wow. you should drink lemon wow. water. Right. So I did the same. So I titled the exact same. But I said, you know what, I'm going to this is clickbait, but I'm going to give people the right information, my own experience. Um, that video today has like over 20 million, 20 or 30 million views. So long story short, to lose weight, you, it, it shouldn't be the fast way, because if you're going if you're going about it the fast way, it's very likely you're going to regress back. It's more about creating sustainable habits and. This comes from, you know, cutting out fizzy drinks and like, and I, when I mean fizzy drinks, I mean, calorie filled, very easy, mm -hmm. you know, just mm -hmm. start there, go to the gym, right? If you go to the gym three times a week, improve that to four times a week, five, six. Then the second thing, I, what I've been like trying to implement a lot more now is like go for walks, start mm -hmm. walking. Those videos have been super helpful. And I coach people too. And all my clients who've been successful are the ones who've implemented healthy habits, mm -hmm. the walking over a span of time, super duper easy. Right. So you keep the weight off. So if you take a year and you do 10,000 steps each and every single day over the year, that accumulation of steps would have kept you from gaining X amount of weight. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's all these little, small little habits that you can integrate that allow you to live a healthier lifestyle. For example, now I, I can't eat a McDonald's burger. I'll feel sick. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's just because of that habit that you've developed because you eat healthier food and you can tell when something's like not mm -hmm. super healthy, it makes you feel like weak. It makes you feel groggy. Mm -hmm. You know, it can give you a headache if the sodium is too high, all of that happens. So it's about creating sustainable habits. For sure. I think uh, you were mentioning to me, Bogdan, like quite a few weeks ago, you're like, man, I had this uh, junk food last night and I feel like crap. Like my body has become so sensitive that right now, if I don't eat what I'm supposed to be eating, I can't really cope with it. Like I'm mm -hmm. just going to feel like garbage, as you said, Mike. But you mentioned uh, cutting out fizzy drinks and I really been waiting to ask you this question because I'm super curious yes. to know your take. But would you say that Artificial sweeteners are the better alternative to sugar. If so, why? And if not, why? Yeah, so my my take on all foods overall is balance, right? So it, too much of a good thing can always be a bad thing. For example, and uh, what I've done, for example, I've cut out as much artificial sweetener as I can. I'm currently in prep mm -hmm. 13 weeks out mm -hmm. and... When I have all artificial sweeteners, do I have cravings for more sugar? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, but it's definitely better than having foods with a lot of sugar in it because I feel like that has a more profound effect. I've, I've, I've noticed if I had food that has any form of sugar in it, I do want more of it. And I did research into it and it's more so not because the sugar is addictive, but because it's hyper palatable. Mm -hmm. So artificial sweeteners to a certain extent is okay in moderation. So maybe, you know, you drink black coffee, you can't stand drinking sour coffee, adding some artificial sweetener is okay. You know, maybe one or two cups and that's it. That's maybe your bit of sugar. But if you're overdoing it, right, you're drinking like four liters of Coke Zero. You know, you're having you're having like a crazy amount of artificial sweetener in your coffee. You're having three to four cups. And I think that it eventually takes you down that route that you don't want to go to. So my take is, you know, a bit of balance. Also, just now myself, I get super bloated when I add artificial sweeteners to um, my diet overall. So I, I try and find a balance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Lovely. Sure, thank you. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. You know, you might. Yeah, and just one more thing. Sorry about yeah, that. Yeah. Um, I think with fitness people, try one side, like it's all or nothing. It's like finding right. balance. Yeah. It's, it shouldn't be like that. That's what makes it super difficult. So you want to find a balance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I completely agree. 
Um, yeah, you were just mentioning that you are 13 weeks out now from your competition show. And uh, myself and also Pasco went to some shows as well, some finish shows back uh, like two, three years ago. And I'm really curious, why do you think that, because it's very hard, we gotta admit it, it's extremely hard, you gotta go to a, like a extremely low percent, body fat percentage, why, sure. why do we do this to our bodies? Why? What's the reason we put ourselves in such like conditions, unnatural conditions? That that's an awesome question. That's an awesome question. By the way, I haven't seen your physique, Bogdan, but I've seen Pascu. Incredible physique, bro. Like incredible. You need you need to get on stage at some point again, go through that journey. But uh, why? There's a great question. Like I, I have I have this conversation with my girlfriend. It took me two years to get her to go to the gym. But now she's in it, right? And she's super addicted to going. We go together. We don't train together, but we go together. And she was talking about how she doesn't like, uh, um, you know, seeing women's physique athletes. They they are a bit more showy, flamboyant because they have like the glittery bikinis and they do their hair. And she was talking about why do people not, why, why do girls do that and guys don't? Um, my point in this is that I think as human beings, we like, and I think it's a certain type of human being, right? Like there's, there's, you know, one group and there's another group, one group that likes learning extreme of something, right? And they'll go as far as they can on in that direction. So it's the same, like, let's say if you want to be a runner, like you'll see people doing marathons and you'll ask yourself, what's the purpose of running a marathon? And those people like learning you know, digging to the edge of who they are as a human being. So as you guys know, with, with physique and prep, it's not about like what happens to your body, but for me personally, it's what happens internally, right. Of mm -hmm. overcoming it, of overcoming adversity. So I think for a lot of individuals, it's about learn. It's a learning moment for themselves with any, with any type of sport, be it boxing, football, you know, pe people want to overcome adversity and they learn most about themselves in those difficult positions. So you end up finding a lot of, you find this group of individuals who like taking themselves there mentally and it ends up, you know, teaching them the most about themselves. I've always said this on my YouTube channel that I wouldn't be a doctor today if it wasn't for fitness. More so if I didn't learn the, the aspects of like consistency on a diet, you know, paying attention to detail, you know, not missing workouts and stuff like that. I translated that to medical school, right? So I paid attention to detail with the stuff that I read. I would attend all my classes. Um, I would sleep early. Were, these were, those are the things I learned through physique and fitness. And I think without it, I wouldn't be like chatting to you guys today. So I think people go that direction they want to improve and then they just start seeing all these other added benefits of you know taking yourself through that process for sure i completely agree with you and uh, mm -hmm. uh, as you mentioned i think it's a character trait and it's only developed in certain individuals that have a tendency and like funny story yesterday i was going uh, like 30 minutes away um, I just walked there to pick up a microwave, a secondhand microwave. And basically once yeah. I got there, the lady, she was like, just be careful. It's a bit heavy. And I took the microwaves and in my mind, I was like, this is light. Like, what is this? And yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm just going to walk with it. Whatever. I, I don't need to take any Uber or anything like that. Like 10 minutes in the walk, I was like, holy shit, this is way, way heavier than I thought it would be. And yeah. first thing that popped into my mind was like, maybe I can actually give myself a challenge and walk home without taking any breaks. Of course, I took like four or five breaks because it was physically yeah. impossible. But when yeah. I got home for like three hours, I had my whole bicep swollen. Like I couldn't feel my arm anymore. And mm -hmm. I was like thinking, why have I actually done that? And I think it's it answers the same question that Bogdan was, uh, was asking. Is basically trying to put ourselves through such adversity that you just want to, you want to see how you react and you want to see what, what you're made of pretty much. But with that said, Mike, I, I really sure, just want to dive, uh, dive further and ask you, what is one experience that you are the most grateful for and why? 
Oh, man, experiences. I, I feel like it's all the shitty ones, bro. All the shitty experiences mm-hmm. I'm like the group most grateful for. Because I think it like it allowed it molded me to the person I am today. If you were to meet someone who knew me 10 years ago, they would sound very different. The same with someone who met me five years ago, I'm very different. And a year ago, I'm very different. So example, like you get people say, I hate my ex-girlfriend or my ex-girlfriends, right? And if you think about it, at some point you love that person, like mm. deeply, profoundly, and you tell the whole world you love them. And then you get to a point where you don't speak to them. However, that individual was responsible for teaching something about yourself over time. So in some way, they molded you. Although like the ending was shit, they taught you something. So the same thing goes with like, all the times I'd failed in school, I, I remember being in high school and everyone telling me I would never, I, I couldn't become an academic and I would fail, bro. And I was like, damn, like, like this, my, my life isn't going anywhere. Cause I would see everyone else. Like the, the thing was like, if you don't get good grades, you're not going to be successful. So I feel like all my adversities, I wouldn't trade for the world. Like if you, if you could say, Mike, all the difficult things you you'd go through and including the ones that are coming from me in the future, right? I prepare for them. I'm ready for them. Um, sometimes, you know, they're just too much to bear with, but they're necessary to kind of mold you to the person you are, you know, at the end of the day. So that is what I'm grateful for. It, it sounds super weird, but it has allowed me to be a better person at the end of the day. So even like with making YouTube videos, I can look at my videos from six years ago, one year ago, two years ago, and I'll look back at it and I'll be like, that's a terrible video, maybe with some terrible advice. Um, example, I made a video on apple cider vinegar, just what like, pops out of my mind and I tried it. And to me, it like helped. But then I was like, how many people actually decided to like drink apple cider vinegar because of what I had done then? And those are things I'm much, I'm much more conscious about today. And, you know, you, you're bound to make more mistakes and you're going to learn from them. And I think that's one thing with social media influencers is that everyone puts on this facade that they're perfect, but like as mo- it's actually those ones who, who are somewhat successful are going through the most. So I'm, I'm grateful for adversity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Love that. Thanks for sharing it. And I completely agree with you because I mean, we tend to judge ourselves and the other people as well uh when they change and if they are not acting like you have said in the same manner that they have acted six months ago and one month ago one year ago and it's so bad because like you have said people change and you have different opinions and like you can shift your perspective on something in a matter of seconds if you have like the evidence for it yeah and with that said, uh, I'm just curious. I'm just going to ask you. What, I mean, you are this, uh, you can say, complete athlete, and uh, you are quite famous. And uh, most probably, a lot of people would want to live your life. And I'm just going to ask you what's one thing that you would change about yourself right now that you are not uh, necessarily proud of or uh, you just want to get better at? That, that's so hard, bro. Cause you know, I've, I've through my seven years of like creating fitness content, I lived in Russia. So I never, mm-hmm. I never, I never did. I, I did, I've done maybe one or two meetups in my life, but mm-hmm. in most of my position, I, I'm very secluded from uh, social media in terms of like the interaction that I get. So I never, ever felt any form of fame. Um, so a lot of the adversity I go through, is like very personal and i've just realized that there's a separation between like online and real life um and i've I've come to accept that so what what i would say that i wish i could improve about myself is like right now in prep i'm consistently asking myself if i'm doing enough and that's my own internal battle in terms of like am i doing enough Am I, am I deserving of what I have and am I going to keep what I have? And those are, those are the things that I'm trying to improve. Um, I I also realize right now the position I'm in is also like very privileged. Like I, I, I posted the other day, like I'm super hungry, like the struggles that you're on a diet. And I was like, I'm not complaining because to be on a diet's a privilege. So 
you know, it's, it's knowing that it can all be taken away. I'm from Africa. So like my life wasn't always what it is today. And I mean, I walked right outside and there are people like living with like just tarps covering, you know, where they sleep and stuff like that. So um, it, it's a reminder. And, you know, I, I think I'm still trying to learn a lot about myself. Um, there, there are moments that come that I get checked. People will check me and I'll, I'll see the message and I'll, I'll improve. I'm not going to make it a, a big thing, but right now I'm still learning. I feel it, it, it's so difficult to pinpoint one thing. Um, because like at this moment, I'm like really living like a monk. I wake up at four, four to five. I, I train. Um, I, I, I've even like stayed away from social media more now to detach myself just so I can focus on this goal. I post what I post and I stay off it. So I can, I try and consume less of it and, um, you try trying to see how I can, but can be better. So there's nothing I can pinpoint right now, but you know, there's these things that you do in prep that you're always in your mind. And, um, yeah, you, you, you can be super insecure about everything. Like right now I'm just like, yeah, I'm not shredded enough. I'm not shredded enough. I'm not shredded enough. So, um, those are like just things I'm trying to overcome. I don't know if that answers, if that yeah, answers for sure, anything. For sure it does. For sure it does. And one thing that I can definitely notice straight away is the fact that you are super conscious about everything that you do and super self-aware because for someone like you to actually think of themselves, like, am I doing enough? I think that's a bit too extreme, uh, but it's good. It's good because it keeps you on your toes and it keeps sure. making sure that you are, you are uh, constantly improving. But Mike, I wanted to, to dive back into the fitness slash nutrition subject and ask you something that has probably been asked to you before, but with all the information yeah. out there and with all the, I guess, apps like my fitness pal and like so many youtubers that are putting so much good content out there like yourself why are people still overweight like it blows my mind sometimes yeah man at the at the end of the day like oh being overweight is a choice mm. i take that back to a certain extent it's a choice right because there's everyone everyone lives a different life so they put themselves in different situations example if I live, when I live in Russia and it's winter time, like I don't move and all I want to do is eat. When it's winter, I'm sure you guys know this too. When yeah. it's cold, yeah. like I gain weight. There's nothing I, like I could go and I've, I've tried. This is one of the reasons why I moved from Moscow because it was like peak winter. I was just like, bro, I'm getting, I'm gaining weight. This is terrible for business. And I was doing every, everything, man. I was doing ter uh, tremendous amounts of hit training hard. So sometimes it can be conditions like the condition mm -hmm. that you're under and that can also that that can also just be like if you're a kid and you live in a household where everyone eats a certain way like you almost have no choice right what are you gonna do tell your parents like hey man i ain't eating that meat with all that oil in there mm -hmm. i remember my mom mm -hmm. I, I was at, I, I told my mom i was on prep and she was like i'll make your rice for you i'm like cool and i saw like the stick of butter she put in my rice was like this i was like oh you about to sabotage me like, I can't no. relate. so what yeah so, so so for a lot of people it's circumstance for those who do, who who can overcome that circumstance it's about like the choices that you make so i tr i coach i coach a few people and right uh, a lot of them right now um are more between like medium and upper class in their life, right? So they have access to like the best equipment in terms of like, you know, at home gyms, especially like through the pandemic, right? Um, the amount of gyms that were able to be created. And at the end of the day, with a lot of them, it's about the decisions you make and how bad do you want to be able to stick to those decisions? So like I have a few CEOs and it's about, you know, preparation for them. Some of them are like, some of them really want to see that transformation and they'll spend with however much they need to. So with all that content that's on YouTube, people watch it, people take it, but it's like, do you apply it? Do you mm -hmm. apply any of that? Most people like, and you guys know this, track your macros. How often do people track their macros? It is so tedious for most, but it's a choice that you need to make. It's the same thing between 
you know, you go to a restaurant and you decide what you want to eat is between like the choices. And most people don't make the right choice in terms of like what they do, which I don't blame them. Right. Like for me, example, once prep is over, it'll be 10 times harder to make the right choices food wise. So this is why if you go on my channel, it's a lot about fat loss. And I get a lot of flack for like, Mike, why do you only make videos about fat loss? It's like, there's a consistent demand for it. People have heard caloric deficit like 30 billion times by this stage, but some of them need, you know, to go through some direction to be able to make those right choices. Be it like you invest in a coach. Like I need, I need to invest it. I need to have a coach to really be able to take me that far. Cause I don't think I'd be able to coach myself through it because um, I'm very likely to make the wrong decision. And I think it's the same for most people. So it's can it's the circumstance and it's like the choices that they make and how important those, how important, you know, losing weight is. That's why you have, have you seen the show? Like my 600 pound life. Have you seen that show? Uh, I think I've heard yeah, of it. I think I've heard of it. Right. And if you watch it, you see these, it, it, it's like individuals who are 600 pounds and they're fighting for their life, right? They're, you know, their heart can't take it. They're, you know, like the blood work is all over the place and they're fighting for their life and they're making, they're still unable to make certain choices. And some of them is harder than for, for like them compared to other people. So you're just like, stop, just stop drinking the fizzy drinks and see what happens. And you know, some people are like, it's, they're, they're past that point where, you know, it's even just a physical thing. It's like a mental thing. Have you guys mm -hmm. heard of Stephanie Buttermore? I'm sure you have. Mm -hmm. Jeff Nippard's girlfriend. Oh yeah. Jeff Nippard's yeah. girlfriend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she and and she she made a series called um, what was it called? She basically she started eating, right? She was always super shredded, super lean. She had competed, and she was talking about her relationship with food. She got a lot of flack for it, but I understand. Because, you know, some uh, sometimes the, the choice some people make is eating very, very little, which is an extreme too. Mm -hmm. And that also has negative, negative side effects. So each individual is very different, but there's so many things, man. And it's, at the end of the day, it's choice and condition that you're placed under. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go and I would say that on, on top of that, it's also, it's also the fact that going through a prep, especially if it's your first prep, the probability of you developing an unhealthy relationship with food is huge. Like I yeah. remember my, myself after my first show, of course, I didn't want to put all of that garbage in my body, but did I actually do that? Of course I did for like probably 10 days and I've gained the whole weight back. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. You, and, and to add to that, you know what? It's hormonal too. Like mm. these uh, these can like example for the people with, with, um, you know, morbid obesity, like the people, like the, the people in 600 in that show, my 600 pound life, they, they're that weight is also a reason due to their hormonal imbalances. And that happens when a, when a physique athlete finishes with a prep, their ghrelin is super high, right? Which is the hunger hormone produced by the stomach. And then the second one, which is even worse, is leptin is super low. Leptin is um, produced from fat cells and the fat cells that are responsible for, you know, sending this inhibition to your brain to tell you that, hey, you're full. So you're like say, to peak your satiety. But because you're so, so low body fat, you don't have any of that feedback from the fat cells, right? Because you're you're in lack of, right? You're in single digit. And all you can do is eat. I'm sure you felt this, Pascal. You yeah. eat, eat, eat. You're, you can see your belly can't take anymore. And then you're thinking about your next meal. So, so for some people, and also it is very like, it, it is also a hormonal response, mm -hmm. which is more difficult, which is a lot more difficult. I, I sort that out with a lot of my clients. I have a lot of guys that come to me with 1,500 calories. Like I'll be like, how much have you been eating? It'll be like 1,500 calories. What are you going to do in that scenario, bro? I can't put you in a deeper deficit, right? Like, it's, like you're, you can't eat a thousand, right? Like it's impossible. It's unsustainable. And some, sometimes you need to correct those things. So yes, it does sound simple, but not for everybody. Mm -hmm. I'm, gl I'm glad you touched on that. 
Yeah, and also I would add that a lot of people are just trying, when they're trying to change, they're just trying to change everything at once, which is like, it's kind of impossible because you are made of like your daily habits and your routine and you can't just change everything at once. Like you have said, and the best, the best example is with the fizzy drinks. I mean, if you know that you are overweight, you, I mean, just cut that, you replace it with water or natural juices and then replace, uh, I don't know, something else with the healthier version. And people don't understand that it's not about like a big major change that has to happen in your life in order for you to change. It might sure. just be like the very small changes that add up every day. And like in one year, you may be like we have discussed earlier, not a person. For sure. For sure. I, I think, it, yeah, as, as you guys said, it's a big part in human psychology. People like we live in a world of fast results, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I've been always super deep, big into crypto and the amount of people that ape into crypto and example, throw all their money in because they want to see the results of, you know, changing their financial status quickly is, is incredible. And um, I've been following crypto since 2017 and I'm, I just watched the cycle repeat and repeat and repeat. And it's the same kind of with the diet, right? People want to see results immediately. So they go all in, they go all in, they get wrecked, they get wrecked. Then they're like, yeah, yeah, I'm done with this. I don't want to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. it's not so me. it's the same with the diet. It's just not sustainable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mike, I wanted to ask you, uh, and this is a bit more of an esoteric question, uh, diving further uh, in the podcast. Um, yeah. I'm sure there will be a chance at some point, therefore, when there's going to come the opportunity for you to be able to become immortal, would you choose to? If so, why? And if not, why? Oh, hell no. Hell no. How come? Nah, you need to die, bro. You need to bounce when it's your time. Think about it like this, bro. How depressing will it be? Like everyone you know is dead. Everybody you know is dead. Like how depressing does that sound? And you know, I, I think those are one of my fears, right? Seeing people, uh, seeing someone that you love die, right? Uh, they're no, they're no longer there. And when I don't, when I see, say, when I see someone, I mean, like, and, you know, I sympathize and I, I, I truly, truly feel sad. And I mean, I'm in, I'm in the hospital. So I see this, you see someone like your brother, your sister, your mother, your father pass away. And they're like, never, you'll never see them again. Right. Depending on what religion you're in. So what happens when you're just like the only one left? Like, what's your purpose? What are you doing? Um, so I don't think, I don't think I would want to go through that. I don't, I don't, I don't see benefit in that either. Also, this depends on what your own worldview is, mm -hmm. but like as a world, we're not getting better for sure. We're not, we're definitely not getting better. Like look at COVID COVID made COVID made like all those, you know, crazy, um, futuristic movies look real. Mm -hmm. in terms of like the world ending. So um, I, I, in short, I wouldn't want to be immortal. For, I, what about you guys? I 100% wouldn't want to be. And I think it's the okay, same okay. with Bogdan. But we get, we probably recently got like a 60% no and a 40% yes from our guests. And I'm always amazed to to know why some people would actually want to be. And as much as I respect uh, their, their opinion and their perspective, I, I just feel like first and foremost, as you said, you're gonna see everyone else die. Second, there's gonna be no sense of urgency because you've got all the time in the world. And third, yeah, do you think you would actually appreciate things such as like, oh, it's raining in London, this is so beautiful. Would, do you think that such things would make any sense for you? Because you've already been around for like a couple of hundreds of years. So everything is just... Uh Absolutely. Like, I, I think we'll take away the humanity of things. Imagine you have like, you've had like 67 sons and daughters over your lifetime. By like the seventh one, you'll be like number seven. You'll start naming them number. There's just be no like sentiment. You know, I, I just feel like it'd be super empty. And this was what I was saying about human beings. Like your experiences make you who you are. What are you if you're immortal? right? You, your experiences are so infinite. It makes you, it, it, you will be like consumed or you will be empty. One of the two. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. If I yeah. if you think about yeah. it a bit deeper. 
Yeah, really nice. I completely agree with you on this one. Just to change a little bit the subject, um, going a little bit deeper, what would you like or want to be remembered for or as long after you are gone? Yeah, um, that's a great question. I think the last time someone passed away was Kobe and I cried. I cried when Kobe passed. Why? Like, why, why when Kobe passed, did I cry? I cried like twice that day. And I, I hated, like, I hated everyone because they would play all these sad videos of Kobe. And I'm like, stop doing that. And think of like the impact a person like Kobe Bryant left. The, I think in my lifetime is the first time I've seen on social media that Kobe has been gone for about two years now, a year and a half. And he's still He's, he's still being, you still see him on social media at least once a week or every day. And that is because of the mark that he left as a human being. And it wasn't like he donated a billion dollars to, you know, helping people or, you know, he saved a million people, but he was able to uh, set an example for a lot of people about, you know, how to tackle things and how to overcome adversity and, you know, his, uh, his saying of the Mamba mentality. And I think in myself and in all the people he was able to touch, he was able to leave that forever lasting, um, impression. And I think that is being immortal. That is being immortal. So one of my reasons for like the videos that I make and the way I live is that, can I leave, can I leave an impact like that? Like you don't want to pass and then just be forgotten because it means you just, maybe you did nothing. And it necessarily doesn't have to be to the whole world, but it, at least to the people you touched. So with my videos, right? All my fat loss videos, I know that if someone is able to get into shape, if you go on my channel, the amount of, I give people free PDS all the time and like, I try and do a lot as much hate as I'll get for it. But if I think about it, if I can transform as many people as possible, if it's just like through small little tips and they get in shape, they'll forever be the guy who helped me get in shape was Mike diamonds. Right. Okay. Super. Maybe it wasn't for me, but it led you down a rabbit hole. It gave you some sort of idea that that's, that's that impact that I would like to have. And you know, you know, everyone knows who Athlean X is. You watched his videos five, 10 years ago of how to perform certain exercises. And he has, he's had an impact, you know, fake weights or whatever. I'm like, oh, that stuff doesn't matter. So I think that, um, like I would want to be remembered for, you know, doing something good for people. You help someone somehow. And, you know, that is immortality to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's super powerful and i mean you can look back like 2000 years ago to like the stoics like seneca like marcus aurelius or you can even look back like 10 years ago to people like christian guzman that myself and i'm more than certain that yourself will never forget like i remember when i was watching his uh his uh channel and he's only just moved into like one of the new gyms that he had at the time. And I was like, wow, how is he doing this? How is he doing that? And like yeah. now, even though I, I don't watch his vlogs as frequent as I used to watch them back in the day, I'm still following him and I still respect him for what he's done and like his whole life journey and how he's been able to tackle all of those things together. But yeah, it's, uh, it's really been a super interesting um, discussion. And as we are approaching uh, the end, I wanted to also ask you, Mike, do you yeah. think that being rich is something selfish no i think people overall have a bad relationship with like money people don't want to talk about money but you need it right you need it to survive if you don't have money you can't put food on your table um and I, the way i've always seen money is freedom right it allows mm -hmm. you to do things like if you don't have money you can't do much like if you can't, if you don't have money, you can't go on a bus, so you can't get an ADB. And being rich isn't selfish. I think I, I think many people decide to do different things, but it's all about a choice. And something that I've learned over my time, right? So I I started with like becoming a doctor and all that. My objective was always to help people. Mm -hmm. And 
it, that that was my quote unquote like altru altruistic um altruistic goal but i look at like not now i do social media full time and i look at all the doctors who who i graduated with and gra guys who graduated before me i realized that like you know 20 years of their life has passed like helping people and seeing people go and come and they're still not like appreciated like example and this might be controversial but have, have the doctors been appreciated for like all the life do you, do you have they really been appreciated for everything they've been doing through covid no and sometimes like what what i've realized to really make an impact with you know a lot of things and sometimes protecting yourself with your own freedom money is necessary um i have a few people who passed away because they couldn't afford the right medical care right they didn't they couldn't get a bed or oxygen tanks to be able to breathe to survive and that was just because they don't have money so if you're like depend wherever you are like protect yourself gain some sort of like financial independence you i don't know if you guys saw the the individual who like tore his pec he was a bodybuilder he tore his pec right um i don't know if you guys saw that it was like a freak he was with um larry wheels and he had to he had to do like donations to be able to have that surgery for his pec wow. i don't know if you saw that if like it was all over it was it, it's tore his pec and he needed twenty five thousand dollars to fix it luckily he it was on camera and he did it with larry wheels and he had like donations on donations and we all know like if you're and he he took he takes steroids if you're taking steroids you're very very likely to have you know tendon issues your muscle overpowers your tendons dramatically how many guys are tearing their pecs or any other body part because of some advice they took online and don't have $25,000 to fix that so protect yourself being rich isn't selfish being rich is like protecting yourself and everyone around you yeah i guess it all comes to what you do with the money and uh like you have said the other question that you uh, we have asked you i mean it's all about what you give back and what impression you leave on uh, on other people but uh talking about change and being more happy just before we ask you the last question i just wanted to ask you and share with our audience what are going to be three things that they can implement in their lives in order to become uh, like we have said healthier happier and better overall okay uh three things mm -hmm. walk 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 why there's so many people i see in hospital beds who wish they could just walk when you walk you think when you think like good things happen and it allows it like one, there's the fit, there's the fitness, health and benefit of walking. Right. Um, I've, I've, I've like promoted this. It taps mainly into your fat stores as a source of energy. And on top of that, man, and like if all the people I I've ever coached and just given them the tip of walking, that's probably like the most important info I've ever given them as a coach. So walk. Um, second thing is learn, keep on improving yourself. If you're not, if, if the, and this is why I ask myself if I'm, if I'm doing enough, if you stop improving, like you die. Uh, I used to be a Gymshark athlete at their, at their HQ. They have a, they have a saying, saying that says evolve or die. So keep on revolving, improve yourself. Example, everyone, everyone in fitness thought they were super secure. COVID happened and people struggled people struggle dramatically in fitness, with their life, in business overall. Everyone who thought that like having a nine, to, not to hate on nine to fives, but everyone who had a nine to five would always be like, I could never run my own business, you know, the security, et cetera, et cetera. Like nothing is guaranteed. So like always find a way to like improve yourself, evolve. And then finally, like take care of yourself, right? Like be healthy to a certain degree. So like example, when I was in, when I was in, uh, I, as I told you, I was in Moscow and I was drinking tremendously. I was making shitty decisions, right? Being in like being like, maybe you step on someone's shoes because you're like walking a certain way and people die for stuff like that in Russia. I'm not saying it happens all the time. I'm saying there's just so many freak scenarios that you find yourself in. So that's my point in, in the sense of like, take care of yourself. So like, 
if you can cut out drinking, you don't need it, right? Like, or do it in moderation. If you can be healthier and prevent like any like illnesses, like, you know, go to, go to the gym at least and take care of yourself just a little bit. So those are the three things. One, walking. Two, evolve, improve yourself. And three, um, like take care of your health. Because yeah, without health, you, you don't have anything. You heard my guys. I mean, if only 1% of the tips uh, and your mindset uh, you have shared, people would apply in their lives. Their lives would just change completely. And uh, thanks for sharing those with us. And uh, yeah, I mean, we got to be aware as well of uh, your time and our audience time. So we're just going to ask you the last question. If you need it, just take your yeah. time to think about your answer. So imagine that you yeah. are on your deathbed. So you are about to die. Okay. But just before okay. that, uh, right next to you is the best version of yourself looking at you in your eyes. You see and comprehend what you could have become. So how would you feel about your life and about yourself in that specific moment? If I was on my deathbed right now? I mean, you, you have lived your life. Uh, you have done... Uh, I guess whatever you have set your mind to. So uh, now nah, there is the best version of yourself looking at you in the eye. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know what I'll be tomorrow, but if I were to die today, I'd be happy. Mm. I'd be like very happy. And I say that because um, I've really tried. Like that's, I've really, really tried. Um, and that's why, that's why I say like, I'm always asking myself if I'm doing enough. Right. And I go to bed and I'm like, I did enough. And it's like one of the things with like waking up at 5 a.m. Um, I, I started doing this in I started doing this in uh, med school because I was like, hey, my grades are suffering. I need to improve. And I said, okay, look, this is another, I tapped into something else, something different. So I, if it was today, if I were being in my deathbed today, I'd be happy um, because I felt like in the moment I did enough. And I have a lot of, I, I've always had a lot of people who asked me, um, Mike, how did you get through med school and fitness and et cetera? And I was like, well, I always challenge myself to do enough. I stopped partying. I stopped, you know, doing things that I just felt weren't going to benefit me in the future. And um, like doing stuff like that still till today. I mean, as you, as you guys watch this whole podcast, the sun, the sun came out. I have a whole day still of like amazing things that I could still accomplish, be it the videos that I make or whatever. So I'm living, man, I'm living as much as I can. And it doesn't have to be like, I'm, you know, on a private jet flying, whatever. I mean, like taking advantage of, uh, the 24 hours I'm given. So mm -hmm. I'd be happy. Mm -hmm. I appreciate your answer. And I think it's only going to be again, a matter of perspective because there's only room for more improvement as much as you can improve every single day. It's always like, ah, oh, I could have done that differently. I could have done that. Maybe I could have slept 10 more minutes always. or 10 less minutes or whatever. But yeah, at the end of the day, it all comes down to that. But Mike, it's been an absolute pleasure, uh, both for me and Bogdan, and hopefully for the audience as well. Uh, and uh, before I let you go, I'm just going to give you the red carpet to share um, your YouTube channel, share your coaching services, whatever you want to share, any resource, now is the time to do so. Awesome, awesome. First of all, thank you guys, man. I think this podcast is amazing. What you guys are doing is great. Like um, I've, I've seen the guests that you've had on and I've asked you, thank you for having me on here. I know it was a mission, but um, I, I, with prep, with prep, you can imagine what it goes on with. Um, in terms of like the red carpet, um, my name is Mike Diamonds, but you can find me on YouTube as Dr. Mike Diamonds. And I think I'll just give you YouTube because I think it'll be helpful. I think you will, you will go there and you'll find some sort of value. And um, maybe that can be our first interaction, be it I chat to you in the comments or wherever. So search me on YouTube at Dr. Mike Diamonds and um, we'll chat again. Awesome. Awesome. Well, all, uh, all the links will be uh, in the description as always. And with that said, this was Pascu. This was Bogdan and you guys stay grateful. Take care. Thank you so much for sticking all the way till the end. This shows that you are serious about taking your life to the next level and doing that through a perspective of gratitude. 
If you enjoyed this interview, it would help us massively if you could give us a 5 star rating review on iTunes or else share this on your stories and tag us. This way, with your help, our message will be seen by more people and together we will make this world a better place.